Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain Television with Esther Gilloum. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of thanks to the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, following his visit to the Council yesterday. The Prime Minister appreciated the MP's sense of national responsibility and said his visit aimed to thank the Council for its monitoring and legislative role in conveying the people's aspirations and needs. He confirmed support to the MPs and stressed keenness to build on constructive and fruitful cooperation with the Council to enhance democracy and reinforce its role within society. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, met at Gudabir Palace today with a number of royal family members and state officials, led by the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness commended the contributions of the Bahraini people to the development of national action, highlighting the efforts in this regard of Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, who is considered a role model of Bahraini, Arab and Islamic history. The Prime Minister expressed pride in the success of Bahrain's economy despite all the challenges imposed by international developments, highlighting the good financial results of financial and banking institutions. He praised the successful management of these institutions in the Kingdom, which confirms Bahrain's readiness to deal with all challenges. He also hailed the government's successful policies and programmes that led to economic stability at a time of unstable international security and economic circumstances. For their part, the audience expressed thanks to the Prime Minister for his support of the financial and banking institutions and the economic sector. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabir Palace today GCC Ambassadors to Bahrain, led by the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Kuwait's Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Asa Mubarak Al Sabah. The Prime Minister highlighted the accomplishments of GCC leaders who enhanced the development of their countries. He affirmed that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is the protective shield of Arab and Islamic nations saying that its policies, led by the custodian of the two holy mosques, had succeeded in uniting Arab efforts and created a single entity in the face of all challenges. His Royal Highness reviewed with the ambassadors regional and international developments and called for enhanced joint Gulf and Arab action to establish a strategic partnership that would generate a more powerful political and economic impact on the international decision-making process. He affirmed that the people of the Gulf long for further integration amid the ongoing international tension and challenges which is affecting the Gulf development process. He highlighted Bahrain's interests, led by His Majesty the King, to support all efforts that reinforce the GCC and give it greater immunity against regional and international security and economic difficulties. On behalf of the ambassadors, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps thanked the Prime Minister for his constant interest in strengthening Gulf relations and commended his wisdom and leadership.
The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held its regular meeting today, chaired by Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, in the presence of his deputy, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The meeting commended His Majesty the King's initiative to build 30 institutes affiliated to Egypt's Al Azhar Al Sharif Islamic Institution across the Republic, valuing the King's support for all Al Azhar's moderate message and its approach of tolerance and coexistence. The Council also highlighted His Majesty the King's speech during the 13th Islamic Summit in Istanbul, which was delivered on his behalf by the Deputy Premier, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. With regards to the Syrian issue, the Council condemned the massacres targeting civilians in Aleppo, which also affected hospitals, and called for a cessation of hostilities to allow peace to prevail and to stop the bloodshed. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, met today with the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Al Zayani. In the presence of the Chief Executive of Bahrain Authority for Tourism and Exhibitions, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser commended the Ministry's role in supporting all efforts to enhance investment and boost the economy, highlighting Bahrain's economic strategies for improving the sector in the best interests of the country and the people. The meeting also discussed ways of supporting young Bahraini small and medium sized projects and increasing training programs to enhance their understanding of the market. The wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, deputised the Supreme Council's Deputy President, Dr Sheikha Maryam bint Hassan Al Khalifa, to open the fifth legal forum at the University of Bahrain, which was attended by a number of academics, Shura Council members and judges. Dr Sheikha Maryam bint Hassan lauded the Supreme Council's plans and strategies for providing equal opportunities for both genders and for supporting the empowerment of women. The SCW Secretary General Hada Al Ansari delivered a speech in which she commended the contribution made by Bahraini women in the judicial field since the 1970s. For his part, the President of the University of Bahrain, Riyad Hamza, expressed pride in Princess Sabika's patronage of the forum and hailed the numerous achievements made by the SCW during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, chaired the Council's weekly meeting today, in which the Council issued a statement condemning Iranian interferences in the region and another statement regarding the situation in the Syrian city of Aleppo. The Council also approved a report on raising the minimum pension and retirement benefits law for BDF and public security members and government employees. The Council then approved a report on social security. The Council approved four draft laws on the following an agreement between Bahrain and Bangladesh on double taxation, trade and investments, on personal data protection, on regulating the real estate sector and electronic transactions. The Council also approved a report on amending some law provisions of the Bank of Bahrain and financial institutions. Now it's time to join Danielle for the latest business news. Thanks very much, Esther. A very good evening and welcome to the business news here on Bahrain Television. Bahrain's General Council for Islamic Banks and Financial Institutions has launched a forum to improve services and offer more innovative banking products. Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid Al Miraj, stressed the need to develop the Islamic banking industry in order to achieve greater success and sustainability and to attract more customers. He called on the sector to develop the training of specialists in the field of Islamic banking tools in order to graduate a new generation of experts in Islamic banking. Bahrain Bourse BHB today signed two agreements with the Bank of Bahrain and Kuwait BBK. The first agreement is to list BBK's perpetual Tier 1 convertible capital securities and the second is to assign Bahrain Bourse as a registrar for the bondholders of the securities. 
Trading in the securities is open to all investors by placing buy and sell orders through a BHB licensed broker, while clearing and settlement will be undertaken by the Bahrain Bourse. The total number of securities is listed at 86,097,511, with a nominal value per capital security of one dinar. Meanwhile, results from the Bahrain Bourse today indicated that 11 bond transactions occurred, comprising a volume of 225,290 securities worth 225,290 Bahraini dinars, representing 66.38% of the total value of securities traded. 24 equity transactions also took place, encompassing 500,480 shares worth 114,083 Bahraini dinars. The Bahrain All Shares Index closed today at 1,109.46 points, a decrease of 3.25 points below yesterday's closing level. And now it's time for the sports news with Fatma. And Fatma, blue is the colour. Now, for me, there's only one story today, but tell us why blue is important today. We've got two wins, Leicester and Head, and both are blue. Great. More details coming up on the sports segment. and welcome to the sports news on Bahrain Television. Al Had claimed their first ever league title with two rounds to go after Muharraq fell to a 2-0 against Manama. The league champions claimed 36 points in 16 games this campaign, holding an 8-point lead against their closest rivals Muharraq. Al Had have managed to also top the goal scoring charts as they hold the highest number of goals scored with 30 in their tally. The highlight of Al Had's season was their striker Mohamed Al Rawihi who put in a top-notch performance week in week out as he sits as the highest goal scorer with seven goals also earning him a national team call up also in the spotlight was their goalkeeper Abbas Khamis who was nominated for the best goalkeeper award for the season Fourth place al Rifa have also announced sacking their Tunisian coach Samir Abin Shammam after a series of disappointing results, winning on four of their last ten games. They also have announced appointing Bahraini Ahmed Isa as his successor.